Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to begin this video with um, apologizing for how I look because um, it's No Shave November and I've been just letting my beard grow and I'm probably gonna trim it and make it look normal pretty soon. But it's just like in the meantime, I look like this. So I'm sorry about that. But if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, our current goal is a thousand subscribers. Every day we're getting a little bit closer, um, but uh, go ahead and scroll down and hit that sub button if you haven't already. So today I wanted to give my opinion on the new Golf R specifically. The, I think it's gonna be either 21 or 22 model year Golf R. Um, I, I put a link to the article that I looked at in the description, but um, I did wanna see you know, um, what you guys thought about the car and I'll let you guys know what I thought about the car. So here are the stats, okay? So um, we're looking at, um, and I have my notes too, because I gotta make sure I know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, so essentially, um, start with the important thing, 320 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. I think that's like 310 or something like that. Um, foot pounds of torque. So those numbers, good numbers. I'm happy about that. It's probably gonna be a little more in real life because you know how Volkswagen is, like they'll say it's that much. And then, you know, like mine dynoed pretty much at, um, and the spoiler, it dynoed pretty much at the same as um, to the wheels that it was like advertised. So it was like, you know, 282, but it dynoed 282 to the wheel stock. So this 320 may be a little more, but it's pretty good power, you know, and the torque is definitely pretty good. And it's also up from the 2019 model like mine. So um, nice there, you know, that's that's good stuff. Um, I'm, I don't know the details behind what they did to get the extra power, if it, they did do anything to the engine to improve its durability or not, um, or performance, whatever they did, I have no clue. I'm hoping that they did. It could have just been a, just a tune or something like that that they changed, which would not be great because that would mean that you might as well buy a 19 because at the end of the day, at least power-wise, at the end of the day, it's just more tuned so it has more power right so um i'm hoping there's gonna be differences in you know components of the engine that cause that increase it's the same size it's still two liter um four cylinder so i don't know we'll have to see what when they come out with specifics about what has changed um so pretty good power numbers there now the second thing i wanted to talk about is zero to 60 time which is i think identical to the old one so um, I mean, not that much different, you know, um, especially in that 0 to 60 range, you're not going to notice that extra power. You're really going to notice that extra power up top. So I could understand why the 0 to 60 is so close. Um, now, um, the two things that are really cool are the, um, or I would stick to one. I mean, the, the drift and the special modes, there are two new modes. Now the drift mode, of course, probably sends more power to the rear allows you to drift just like the Focus RS did, uh, which is great. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't really drift in my Golf and I don't, I don't foresee myself doing it. I barely ever did it in the Mustang ever. So, but definitely a cool feature to have, you know, it's, it's there, you have it. But the second thing that's really cool is the special mode that is um, pretty much a specific mode for the Nürburgring track. Now it's cool, but it, you're never gonna need it because unless you're going to that Nurburgring track. I'm not sure the details behind that special mode. Maybe it is just the track mode. So maybe you can go to any track and put it in special and it's like, perfect, all right, let's go. Without, you know, keeping the stock car, without like doing any modifications that, maybe that special mode has certain parameters based on stock components or whatever. But yeah, that's a pretty cool mode. The only thing that is getting me now about this car is the price. So it's it's more expensive. So I know in pounds, they said 37,000 pounds. That's what the article said, which is about, I think $43,000, which is a pretty, I think, high starting price, especially because after you put a few options in it, you know, you're going, and especially if you get one of those special colors, you're gonna be in the, you're gonna be close to 50, you know? And, you know, with the special colors in the 50s and with the not special colors, you're still gonna be like mid to high four, 40, you know, 40,000, 40, whatever. So it's gonna be an expensive car. I mean, it's not, it's definitely nothing that, um, you know, you can just throw around whatever, don't care about it. It's cheap. I mean, for some people, yeah, but you know, personally, you know, I'd wanna take care of that. I mean, I paid under 40 for mine. So um, that's a little bit more manageable in my eyes, but um, they're definitely, definitely this new car is sick. And you know, if you can afford it and if you like the hatch life, you know, it's definitely a sweet car to get. But now talking about the price range, that point, you know, I'm looking at, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, in the future, if 
say that golf is out in 2022, right? Which is two years from now, or more like a year, a uh, year and just a couple months, whatever. And then you, I may not want to buy the first year. I'm going to wait till the second or third year, right? So that's already like, you know, around three years from now, which that's when I'm thinking about maybe selling the golf and getting another car for me, for the channel, just to enjoy. But at that price range, like maybe I'd rather, or someone would rather just upgrade to a bigger engine or something different, right? Because I mean, once you're getting in the mid to high 40s, sometimes 50s, I mean, you can look at, you can start looking at like, you know, Audi S4s, you know, they're that way you have a six cylinder instead of a four, you have more potential for power. You also have, you know, um, more potential for like, uh, just like, you know, better durability. You're, you know, you're running a lot of power and the weight difference is not that different between an S4 and, you know, a Golf R. Like you're starting to like, you know, it's a little bit heavier, but now you have a six cylinder. You can actually manage more power easier. You can get more power easier. So, you know, before when it was like, oh, you're almost spending an extra 10 to 15,000 to get an S4. Okay, well, then it's worth me sticking to the R, right? But now the price ranges are getting pretty close and I don't know what the new S4 is gonna cost, you know, at that time. Uh, there may be still a huge difference and if there is, maybe the R is still kind of like now, hey, you know, it's it's got the performance and, I, and it's affordable, it's, it's cool and all that, still get the R. But, I mean, you could even get a used S4, you know, at that point. If you don't want the brand new one, you can get one that's like a year, you know, a year or two. And and uh, low mileage and pretty much even maybe less cost less than that you know new Golf R but you have a completely different I guess a step up in my opinion as a car um, so that's just kind of my two cents on that I mean I definitely think that the rear end of the new R looks pretty cool if you see in the article um, looks pretty cool here it is actually um, and that's pretty cool the front end eh, here it is not a fan right now of the headlights I mean it could grow on me like a lot of you know like the the you know 18 Mustang grew on me a lot um, still prefer the 16 you know or 17 and under headlights 15 and 17 but you know like things grow on you but right now I think that the 19 Golf R is I think the best looking golf right now um, I have the mark seven and a half I think it's hands down one of the best looking models um, but the new one, you know, it's gonna grow. People are gonna modify it. Of course, it's gonna look cool. It's still got that basic golf look, but you know, um, I think at that price point, how things stand right now, I think I would just look into upgrading to Audi or something different. I um, mean, especially when you're when you're getting into the 50s. I mean, there's so many things out there you can get, um, especially used. You know, if you don't mind to, you know, get a used car with low mileage and maybe some service history, something like that. I mean, definitely, it's gonna be, you know, a a better buy than a brand new R, if, especially if you're, you know, if you're more focused on what you're getting out of it, right? I mean, the technology in the car, of course, the R's interior is beautiful, the new R's is beautiful, but I mean, what are the basic features that, you know, at that time, say in 2022 or 2023 or whatever, for whatever you want to call it, at that time, you know, if I get a one or two year old Audi, how many less features is it, it going to have than a brand new Golf R at the time, really, you know? So is the money worth, you know, um, the upgrade or not? So um, that's kind of my two cents on that. So uh, let me know what you guys think about, you know, the new Golf R, because, you know, I'm, I'm op open to opinions. I've been a Ford guy for a long time, um, you know, American cars or Italian, but, you know, after getting the R, I'm still learning every day more and more about the German automakers and, you know, their cars and the faults and the good things about them. So if you guys have any feedback for me, just leave it in the comments, um, you know, and if you haven't already, while you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and um, I'll catch you guys in another one. Peace.